Hey, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna talk all about oil. Now, generally on a whole food plant-based diet, it is recommended that you stay away from refined and extracted oils. And a lot of times people are very surprised by this because we've been led to believe that oils are actually good for our health. I get questions from a lot of you guys sometimes, well, what about olive oil? Or what about coconut oil? Or what about canola oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil? Of all the highly processed foods that we eat on a daily basis, oils are not normally on people's radar. Because we've been taught that we use them to cook, we use them to saute, we use them in salad dressings, we use oil pretty much in everything we make. Some people even blend coconut oil into their coffee. And I wanna leave you a couple of links in the description below just so you don't take my word for it, but you have some more scientific reasons why oils are not good to have in your diet. Oils are 100% fat, and besides the fat, they really have no nutrient in them that is good for us. In the whole form, yes, coconut meat, yes, the olives, yes, the avocados, those are all great because they contain the fiber and the nutrients of the whole food. But when these whole foods are turned into an oil form, they're stripped of nutrients, of fiber, and any good thing that you could potentially get out of the whole food form. Even things like extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil barely contain more nutrients than sugar yet they pack on double the calorie. Oils are one of the most calorie dense foods on the planet. So I go into this more in a video that I talk about calorie density, which I'll link down below, but a single tablespoon of olive oil can contain 120 calories. And because oils contain no fiber at all, you can easily down that 120 calories without the fiber and without any additional nutrients. And you're not even going to be full. There's no fiber to keep you full. It's just empty calories. So in other words, oils are something that we really tend to overeat without even realizing it. So I've given this example before, but let's take a meal and compare it what it would be like with oil and what it would be like without oil. Without the oil, say you made a salad and you made an oil-free dressing to go on top of that salad, a really big salad. You made some whole wheat pasta with a marinara sauce from scratch, no oil at all. That meal is probably gonna be somewhere around four to 500 calories, depending on how much you were to sit down and eat. If if you did that meal plus oil, say you put a couple tablespoons of oil into your salad dressing, you sauteed your onion and garlic in oil for your marinara sauce, and you added some oil to your broccoli by sauteing it, you've taken that four to 500 calorie meal and probably made it anywhere from 800 to 1,000 calories because of the oil. Now, when you're trying to lose weight, the thing you wanna do is be in a calorie deficit. And one of the easiest ways to make that happen without even feeling it would be to get rid of the oil in your diet. Because you can see the example that I just gave, the amount of calories that you had in the first you know, non-oil portion compared to the amount of calories that you had with the oil can be up to about half. So that means you can actually eat more volume of those healthy foods without even getting close to the amount of calories had you ingested that meal with oil included. So if you set oil aside, you're gonna be able to stay in shape much, much easier. It's kind of like a no-brainer. You're not missing the food that you're eating because you've just gotten rid of the empty calories of the oil. Does that make sense? Now you may have heard that polyunsaturated fats in oils are actually better than other fats, but the reality is that a lot of vegetable oils out there are high in omega-6s, which Americans actually get too much of as compared to the omega-3s that we really wanna get for overall health and anti-inflammatory properties. In fact, it's been shown in studies that Americans get 15 to one of omega-6 to omega-3. I talk about this more in a video where I talk about omega-3s, so I will also link that down below. And having too many omega-6s in our diet can lead to a lot of health complications and ills, including cancer, autoimmune, and inflammatory diseases, as well as just many chronic conditions. These have all been linked to having too many omega-6s in our diet. So even just by decreasing the amount of vegetable oil that you're having in your diet, you're actually doing yourself a favor and helping your overall health by just reducing those omega-6s. And just in case you were wondering, experts actually recommend a two to one omega-6 to omega-3 or a four to one omega-6 to omega-3 just so you know. And another concern with extracted polyunsaturated vegetable oils is that it can lead to oxidation. And oxidation plays a role in aging, tissue damage, and other health complications. Polyunsaturated plant oils have also been linked to cardiovascular disease, and they actually make the plaque in the blood vessels worse. In general, I would say there's not a good or a bad oil, they just kind of range from bad to worse. Extracting all the fat from a whole food and putting it in a bottle and making it oil is really no different than extracting all the carbohydrates and all the wonderful things that come 
come from that and turn it into basically a bag of sugar. And so for this reason, I absolutely recommend just getting rid of oils in your diet altogether. So that's for optimal health, for cardiovascular health, overall health, and weight loss. So when you eat a whole food plant-based diet, obviously you're eating a lot of your foods in the whole form. But when you buy anything packaged, you want to always look at the ingredient list. A lot of times there's oil in things that, that doesn't even need to be there. It's like, why does this have oil in it? So I'm going to get into some ways that you can cook without oils. And I know the transition can seem really daunting for people, especially if you've been accustomed to eating a lot of fried foods and foods that have been sauteed in oil or have a lot of oil in a salad dressing, but it is possible to make this switch. I personally have been vegan for over 12 years and I didn't make the switch to no oil until three years ago. I just started to learn more about what oil does to our bodies and I realized that I really didn't need to cook with this. There's so many flavorful ways to cook and prepare and bake your food that you do not need oil for. So you absolutely can cook without oil and it's probably way easier than you would imagine. The first way is to saute with just water or vegetable broth. And I know that doesn't sound very exciting compared to oil, but you really can't taste a difference. So you would just heat up your pan the same way you would if you're gonna add oil, then you add a little bit of veggie broth. Veggie broth is definitely my go-to. I love using Better Than Bouillon vegetable base because it's extremely flavorful and you only need to use a tiny amount. You put that in there, you let it heat up, you add your veggies of choice, whether it's onion and garlic at first or just some veggies to saute, really anything goes. And then you just add a little bit more water or vegetable broth as you go if you feel like things are sticking. You don't need oil to make a crispy veggie. If you do it this way, you're gonna really see what I'm talking about. And you can even change it up by adding things like soy sauce or a vinegar or even wine, which I don't normally do, but I wanna throw that out there in case that sounds interesting to you. And once you add your favorite spices, you really can't taste the difference at all. Another way to saute would be kind of like a dry saute. So you heat up your pan till it's nice and hot, maybe like a medium heat, you don't wanna burn your food. And then you just throw in something like green onions or garlic and you continue to stir as you go, never stop stirring. And you're able to brown your onions or your garlic or your green onions whatever it is that you're starting off with to something very similar that you would have when you were browning some onions or garlic with oil. It's pretty amazing. Another trick that I use is any recipes that I'm baking that call for oil, you can use unsweetened applesauce in place of that. It provides a lot of moisture and you do not miss the oil in the slightest. Other things that add moisture to baking that are whole food plant-based substitutes and also substitutes for eggs in some cases can be things like chia seeds, flax seeds, banana, and avocado. You can roast your veggies or make some no oil french fries in the oven with parchment paper. Parchment paper or a silicone baking mat will allow the food that you're trying to roast to not stick to the bottom of the baking sheet or the roasting pan, whatever you've got going. It keeps them crisp and you just keep the veggies or the french fries separated away from each other so that the air can circulate well in the oven and everything gets nice and crispy. Yes, it's a little bit different than having an oily french fry, but it's something that you can absolutely get used to. If you want them to become crispier, I would say invest in an air fryer because that really brings up the level of crispiness compared to the oven in my opinion. I love no oil cooking in an air fryer. I think it's a great thing to have, but it's absolutely not essential. You can do pretty much everything that you do in an air fryer in the oven. And then you can make your salad dressings oil free. This is something that I feel like a lot of people get hung up on because we are conditioned to believe that salad dressings are olive oil and some kind of vinegar. They don't have to be. You can use the vinegars on their own. You can add lots of different spices. You can use the whole plant food form and blend it in the high speed blender to make a really creamy dressing that is made from whole foods as opposed to oil. I have some oil-free salad dressings that I'll share with you guys. Just check out the description down below for those videos. So if you're still watching this and you're still skeptical that you can get rid of oil and that it's going to be easy, all I can say is start small. This is not an all or nothing. You don't have to just completely cut off oil unless that's what you're ready to do and what you want to do. Start minimizing it. I think whenever we pay attention to the amount of oil that we had been using, we realize, holy moly, I thought I was having a tablespoon, I was having a quarter cup. I thought I was having 100 calories of oil and it turns out I was having about 400 calories of oil. So start small. Just starting to take note of how much oil you're using on a daily basis, you will be shocked for sure. So if you normally use a 
tablespoon in a salad dressing, try using a teaspoon and then down to a half a teaspoon and then down to a quarter teaspoon. And then you'll realize that, hey, this really isn't a big deal and I can totally do this. Pretty much every recipe that does include oil, you can sub out, you can use vegetable broth, you can do the dry frying, you can bake without oil, you can roast your veggies without oil. So if you see a recipe that you enjoy and it does contain oil, just see how it is to take it out. The food's not gonna be any difference. You're just going to realize, oh my gosh, this is easy, I can cook without oil. So just to sum it up, olive oil is not a whole food. It's not something you wanna be having if you're trying to do a whole food plant-based diet. It's got loads of calories, loads of fat without any other nutrients in it. It's not healthy for your heart in the slightest and it actually makes the plaque in the blood vessels worse. It's much easier to cook without oil than you think. Start small, make an oil-free meal a week, then start to add it on an oil-free meal a day, and then soon enough you'll be in the right swing of things that you're able to do this. And of course, if you're trying to lose weight, this is a huge component that's going to help you do it without really feeling like you're deprived or losing anything. So. That is why I suggest not having oil in your diet and why you should consider taking it out as well. If you're really trying to get healthy or trying to lose weight, this is going to be a huge component of going on a whole food plant-based diet. So let me know any questions that you might have down below regarding oil. I'd love to answer you and thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and share it with somebody who you know needs to get rid of oil in their life as well. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you know when I'm putting out new videos. I've got a lot more content coming up for you guys. I have a ton of free, oil-free recipes available at my website, veganmichelle.com, and you can learn some more about me and what I do. If you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that's the place to go. And if you want a copy of my free ebook, which is also oil-free, head over to my website. I've got a ton of oil-free recipes on my channel as well here, so feel free to take a look at those. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!